Good morning, everybody. This is on? This is on. Okay, good. Um, so, welcome to uh, Madison Campus Church. And we'd like to welcome our uh, visitors, our internet viewers, and our members. Um, and uh, today is Youth Sabbath. So, our entire service is done by the youth. Um, and we even have sermons uh, coming from a couple of our <laughs> uh, students. And obviously our band. Um, I have a couple announcements before we begin. Uh, today is the all church um, potluck in the uh, fellowship hall after second service, and so we like invite we like to invite all our visitors to come. And this evening is our bi- church business meeting at 5 p.m. And uh, the main subject is church renovation, like the the signs out there. And um, the special Thanksgiving gathering in the bulletin, the number is incorrect. It is not 3274, it's 5274 uh, for the last four digits. So we're trying not to prank call anyone. Um, and now we have uh, Dan Davis up here to give us an uh, announcement regarding the um, Angel Tree Project. As if I wasn't high enough already, I get to stand up on this thing. Uh, If you were in any question what season we're in, probably the cool weather last night has reminded you that it's the holiday season coming up. And one of our traditions here at Madison campus has been uh, supporting the prison fellowship in their angel tree program. And Celebrate Recovery is proud to be leading out in this tradition, so we're really uh, glad that we can get you all to join in. You know our church mission statement, I'm sure by now, is love God, love people, and serve the world. And at this time of year, we can become the hands and feet and heart of those parents who are incarcerated uh, and unable to provide Christmas gifts for their children. Our CR leadership team has been already spending time contacting caregivers and checking to make sure that we know everything we need to know so that we can do this flawlessly. Uh, Because of your generosity last year, we ran short of names. And so this year, we went ahead and uh, got 80 names of angels for our church to um, work with. Our Pathfinder Club has already asked for a large number of those names, and they have plans to shop, wrap, and deliver those names on their list. So it makes it doubly important that if you would like to do something special, like get a name for each member of your family or whatever like that, it would be best if you text Gigi. You can see her contact information on the screen. Um, That would let you get your angel early, get it reserved. Um, Perhaps you would like a Sabbath school class or a golf group or some other uh, core group that you relate with all the time. Maybe you'd like to get together and do uh, three or four angels. Uh, The angel tree will be up in our lobby for two Sabbaths, November 24 and December 1. So if you plan to be out of town, on Thanksgiving weekend, texting Gigi might go ahead and give you a little cushion in your shopping time. Uh, And notice that the suggested gift price is in the $20 range. So if you do want to give to more than one angel, you will not be breaking the bank. So how can you help? There are three main areas that we could use your help. The first, of course, is to sign up for some angels. You can wait until the tree goes up Thanksgiving weekend, but if you would like, go ahead and text Gigi and get your name in for the angels early. Secondly, we could use some help when we have the tree up those two weekends. You know, we have to have the tree up with the angels on it uh, first service through Sabbath school, through second service, and after second service. So if you would like to help with that, please text Gigi and let her know about that. Um, And then uh, the last thing will be the delivery of the gifts. 
So uh, the Prison Fellowship wants all of the kids that get a gift to also get a gospel presentation. And that's not as hard as, as you might think. Uh, it'd probably take only about three minutes to give them a gospel presentation. So if you would like to um, work with the delivery people, uh, please let us know that as well. Uh, we get some pamphlets for each of the age brackets, but we can go ahead and add our own uh, information. So we can give them uh, papers from our Sabbath school classes in the different age groups. We can get them books from Nourish or, or other places. So we encourage you strongly to jump in on that if you would like to donate or if you would like to deliver. Thank you very much. It is now time for children's story. Can all the kids uh, please pass up to the front here? Uh, to my side, please, over here.
Okay. Um, how many of you have gotten lost before? Lost. So today I want to tell you a story about getting lost. Uh, by my house, there's a, a pond, and it empties out into a little creek into the woods. And uh, one day, I wanted to go see what was in deeper in the woods. I told my dad I was going to go, and he told me to stay by the creek. So I followed the creek deeper and deeper, and I walked for about half an hour into the woods. Uh, it was nice outside, the sun was shining, uh, the weather was nice, and I was, I was having a lot of fun. And then uh, I saw something in the distance, and I, I wanted to go see what it was. It was a little clearing away from the creek. And I was uh, messing around there. I saw some holes, you know, uh, big holes and uh, more ponds down there. And I was uh, just running around, seeing all the animals. And then it was time for me to go home. But I didn't know where home was. I lost the creek. I didn't know my way home. So uh, I did what anyone would do. I sat down and cried. Uh, didn't know which way to go. And uh, as I was there sitting there, I was thinking, what am I going to do? How am I going to get home? Who's going to come and get me? What am I going to eat? What am I going to drink? But then, um, while I was crying, I heard a, a small little noise. It was a little, the whisper of water running. I was, really, I was, I was happy. I, I could find my way home. So what I did was I followed the water as quiet as I could so I wouldn't lose it, and I found my path. I walked all the way home, and my dad, I found my dad. And it reminded me of uh, how sometimes uh, we're on God's path, but we get lost. And we stay away from the path, and we can't find our way home. But God always whispers to us in a still, small voice, and guides us back. He tells us to come back home. Um, in Psalm 23, 1-3, it says, um, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day, Lord. Thank you that we're all here together to praise your name. Uh, please let us have a great day today, and uh, let us stay on your path, Lord. And thank you for guiding us there. And we pray. Amen. this? Donuts. Okay. Go ahead. I can have them. Right. You can have them all. These are for me? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Why? I don't know. You just, you look hungry. That is a good donut. All right, well, I gotta hit the road. You mind if I, you mind if I just take one for the road? Just, just one. Well, I am really hungry, and I missed breakfast this morning. I'm probably gonna miss lunch, and I was gonna take these home to my wife and kids. Really, to be honest, they gotta last me the whole week. Will the deacons please come forward? Oh, will the deacons please stand? Uh, today's offering is for the world budget. Uh, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. It's a beautiful Sabbath day. Help all these offerings to go towards what you would like them to go towards, to better your world church. In your name, amen.
Good morning, church. Today, I would like to honor the veterans who are here among us. If you are a veteran, please stand. like to pray a special prayer of thanks for our veterans along with a prayer of blessing for these veterans who have served our country. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for our veterans and for everyone who is serving our country in order to keep us safe. Please bless them and their families in a special way and help them know how much we appreciate their sacrifice. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. wants to be here and no one else told her to. And that's one of the things that I love about Lila. When I asked her why it was that she wanted to get baptized, I had to write it down on my hand, so please bear with me. Uh, she had a lot of really good reasons and I don't want to leave one out. She believes in God. She believes that he created her. She finds reasonable proof that the Bible stories are true. Her dad is brought to church for her whole life, and she was raised in a Christian home. She has faith that this is the right way to live. And lastly, she wants her Madison Campus Church to know that she believes in Jesus. Her favorite Bible verse is Philippians 4.13, which says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I would like to ask Lila's close friends and families to speak with her.
Good morning, church. Today, I would like to pray a special prayer for our veterans. If you are a veteran, would you please stand? Okay. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, you are amazing and we are so glad to serve a God like you. Thank you for all you have done for us, for taking care of us and sending Jesus to save us. Please help us to love each other and serve you better every day. We have lots of people up on the screen who need your help. We bring them to you and we trust them to your care. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.
you, God, please put your words on my heart and please speak through me and uh, keep everyone uh, trying to get to know you more. Amen. While my dad was growing up, he and my papa would hike Mount Lacan. Mount Lacan is a mountain in the Smoky Mountain Range. Uh, my dad grew up in a family with three sisters, his mom and his dad. So it was nice to get out of the house and do something exciting with his dad. So, I, yeah. Two years ago, they decided to do it again, but this time it wouldn't be just them, but me and my cousin Jackson. I heard stories about how Papa and Dad did it when Dad was my age, so I got excited and wanted, and really got excited and wanting, wanted, wow, to make it three generations. So I got excited about hiking my first mountain, so I packed my bags with my toothbrush, toothpaste, and deodorant, and my clothes. But Papa Jackson and Dad were super happy that I did pack deodorant because they would not have been able to stand me on the way back. And I also grabbed my slingshot so I could have something to do when, I was, when we were resting. And then I waited for them to get to my house. There was only one problem though. When I was five years old, Papa was on a motorcycle trip with his friends. When he was riding in the slow lane and a car from the fast lane decided to get gas. So the car turned right and sideswiped my Papa and he was sent tumbling into a ditch with his motorcycle on top of him. He had to be life lighted to the hospital and at the hospital, the doctors found that he had a collapsed lung a few broken ribs and other injuries that resulted in him losing his leg from the knee down. We drove for hours with occasional stops at rest areas and one McAllister's detour. Then we got to Gatlinburg and rented a hotel room for two nights. When we got to the building where they tell us directions to Mount Lacant, people smiled at us and said good luck and I felt like I had already conquered the mountain. But the path wasn't going to be as easy as I thought. My dad, Papa, Jackson, and I stepped to the start. I saw people come to my Papa and speak encouraging words. Uh, 10 feet in, I realized I was, not as in, I was not as in shape as I thought I was. It, the path was so beautiful. There was trees everywhere. And you could see for miles with all the rolling hills. Well, mountains. So when we were hiking, I would scout the path and go ahead, find a good resting spot, wait for them to catch up, and then I'd go again. Sometimes when we were resting, I would pull out my slingshot or my sister's camera and put, yeah, and do something while we were resting. But my favorite thing to do was put a small rock or stone into the sling, pull it back, and send it flying towards some tree. And then when it hit the tree, it made a loud thunk. Then leaves fell off its resting branches. And then I knew what David felt like. The path was never straight. It was always twisting, turning, ascending, descending, becoming wide, and then became small and narrow. Sometimes one of us would say, isn't it amazing what God can do? Or God made our earth so beautiful. Twice when Papa sat down, he went to sit back onto a rock, and then he fell he started to fall forward, and then Papa and my Jack, no, my dad and Jackson had to catch him and help him to sit back safely. 
At one place on the trail, the path was almost five feet wide, and on one side, it was a rock wall going almost straight up, and the other one went almost straight down. And all you could hold on to was a small cable running from the start of the drop to the end of the drop. And when my pop ball crossed, I couldn't help but hold my breath. But luckily, we all made it across safely. Near the end of the trail going up the mountain, you could tell we were almost there. And the picture right there is, or behind, was the rock wall in the drop. I think my papa hiked the mountain because he wanted to relive the old memories with my dad and also to prove a point to the world that with God's help, all things are possible. This reminds me of the story of Joshua. Joshua's, Joshua was a part of the children of Israel who were slaves in Egypt. And when Pharaoh let them go, I bet he thought, wow, I'm glad to be out of that place. I'm glad not to be a slave anymore. After all those years, this should be easy. But, as I found out, it wasn't as easy as he thought. They walked for years through the desert, spied out the promised land, and then said it was too scary. And then they had to walk for another 40 years through the desert. That must have been fun. And the whole time, Joshua never lost sight of his goal the promised land. After Moses died, Joshua became the leader. By now, he knew the path would not be easy, but he let God guide him in the right direction and bring the Israelites to the promised land. So, what I wanted you to get out of my sermon today is, God will never leave your side. He will always be there for you. And he will always direct your path in the right direction. God helped Papa just like he helped Joshua. God can help you in any problem in your life. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understandings. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy paths. Whatever your problem is in life, no matter how hard or difficult it might be, never turn back. Keep your eyes fixed on your number one goal, being in heaven with God. Let's pray. Dear God, please work in their lives and keep their and help them to keep their eyes fixed on you. And also thank you for protecting my papa and uh thank you for helping him to be a big uh influence in my life. And please keep him to uh, please help him to keep uh, being a servant of yours. Amen. Good morning, church family. My name is Kyla. Um, my middle name is Hope. My parents named me Kyla Hope because Kyla means beauty that can only be described in poetry, and they like the combination of beautiful hope. The problem is, is that people regularly mess up my name, which I don't mind, except it can get confusing when there are a lot of K names in my class. I get called Kayla, Kate, Kylie, Kaylee, Katie, or any other version of a K name. Some days it's not even worth trying, and I just go with it. Thanks, Mom and Dad. <laughs> a couple of years ago, I went to Taco Bell with my friends for a school trip. While I was standing in line, I decided that the Taco Bell employee would probably mess up my name, and it didn't really matter what I told them, so my friends and I thought up a name for me. When I got to the register, I said I would like a bean burrito with sour cream and some nachos and cheese for Emma. <laughs> My friends were mostly disappointed that I didn't say the whole name. Kyla, Isla, Emma, Butterfly Squid, Dryla, Swatmore. <laughs> Emma for short. <laughs> that name stuck. From that day on, whenever my name didn't matter, that's what it was. 
for usernames, for Kahoot nicknames, and some of my really close friends even call me Emma. So let me tell you about another girl who had two names. Hadassah was a Jewish girl who lived in Persia and was raised by her cousin because she was an orphan. If life wasn't hard enough, the Persian king got mad at his queen and sent her away then put on a nationwide beauty pageant looking for his next queen. Hadassah had a Persian name, and that's the one she used uh, when the king's servants saw her and she was chosen to audition to be queen. She chose the name Esther. Esther wasn't the only one chosen. In fact, men had gone all over the land looking for the prettiest girls and had come back with a lot of them. It probably felt impossible to be chosen over all of the other people. But God was looking out for Esther, and she became queen of all of Persia. It was pretty amazing that she got to that point alone, but soon there was more trouble. The king's second-in-command put out a decree that all people were allowed to kill all the Jews on a certain day. Mordecai, her cousin, sent a message to her telling her of the decree and asking her to go to the king and request that he would stop it. The problem was is that if she went to the king without being called, he could kill her. I remember being four or five and thinking to myself, um, uh, now is when God will swoop in and make the king call for her for some reason, and she'll explain how she's a Jew, and they need to erase the decree, and the king will say, okay, let's just erase it, perfect, cool, end of story. That would have been easier. <laughs> but that didn't happen. She could have given up. It's too hard, too impossible. I'll probably just end up dead. Instead, Esther fasted and prayed for three days, then went to see the king. He extended his scepter, and she lived. She decided to ask him to go to a banquet along with Haman, the man who thought up the whole decree, and they came. What do you want, Esther? the king asked. But at the banquet, all Esther would say was, for you to come to another banquet tomorrow. The next night, the king asked Esther again what she needed, and this time, she asked that the king would save her people. The king listened and saved them by making a decree that let them defend themselves, and all of the Jews were saved. Have you ever felt like what God was asking you to do was impossible? Recently, as a teenager, <laughs> I've been struggling with things that are happening in the Worldwide Seventh-day Adventist Church. I really love Madison Campus Church, and I hope what I'm saying makes sense. See... Ever since I was three years old, my dad has been a pastor. Some of my earliest memories were my dad speaking or going to meetings with him or visiting church members. When I was in third grade, I felt like God might be telling me to be a pastor. I love public speaking, leading Bible studies, and talking to people about Jesus. Sure, I dream of things like being a, ch a children's psychologist or perhaps a teacher like my mom, but I also still think God might want me to be a pastor at some point in my life. I know and believe that good people can have different beliefs on this topic, and it is important to be respectful of everyone's opinion, and I am. For me, when I heard about some of these decisions, it made me wonder if my church would support what God may be calling me to do with my life. At one point, I was so discouraged that I told my family that maybe I didn't belong in the Seventh-day Adventist church. I could tell that bothered my parents, but they listened and encouraged me to allow God to lead me no matter what's happening in the world around me. A couple days later, my dad stood in my doorway and asked if he could read a letter from Elder Dan Jackson, the North American Division of Seventh-day Adventist President. This is the letter. My dear young friend, Emma, I am very sad as I write this letter to you. My sadness comes because I have heard that you would like to leave our church as a result of witnessing our discussions last Sunday. First, let me say that the church is a family, and like any family, sometimes we disagree. Sometimes our disagreements make us all feel uncomfortable, and I want you to know that I get your discomfort. I feel uncomfortable, too. I wish that you could see the parts of the annual council that were heartwarming and inspiring, such as the story of the Amish family that is working within their own community to bless people with a message that I love. I'm sorry that you found us disagreeing with each other, but sometimes that's what happens, even in your family and in mine. Emma, I am praying that you'll stay with us. The reason is, is that there's a place for you. God himself has given you gifts and abilities that he wants to use to bless many. I am praying that you will stay. Your brother and unknown friend, Dan Jackson, president of the North American Division. 
I remember looking up at my dad and asking him if he'd told Elder Jackson what I'd said. I was so confused. Elder Jackson had even used my nickname, Emma. Did my dad email him or something? Why would he do that without telling me? <laughs> my dad explained that actually Elder Jackson just wrote it to all young people and used the name Emma, which means universal. But then my dad looked at me and said, but Kyla, I think Jesus inspired Elder Jackson to use the name Emma because he wanted you to know that this letter was written just for you. I know it was Jesus talking to me. One of the things it reminded me of was a pastor's metaphor I heard. He said, have you ever been in airplane turbulence? It's not fun. All of the bumps and jolts can be annoying at the least, sometimes even terrifying. But while you're in that, have you ever wanted to get out of the airplane? <laughs> no, because while it isn't fun inside the airplane during turbulence, it is a whole lot worse outside of it. Don't give up on God's plan when things get tough. No matter which side of the church disagreements you're on, don't run away from God's church just because it's hard. Trust God to lead you through the bumpy ride, knowing that we don't have to do this on our own. Just like God led Esther and helped her, he will help and lead you. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, uh, five, yeah, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. He will take you where you need to go if you just let him. Please bow your heads for prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for this awesome Sabbath day. Um, please help um, us to let, uh, to let you lead us. Help us to go where you want us to go. Um, amen.